601, we'll call a meeting to order. And we have one administrative question. Okay. So with hybrid meetings, which in the past, the select board has said try to do hybrid or transparency accessibility for all the three main boards. So planning commission, DRB, select board. <clears throat> we ran into an issue last week with the DRB. Not, not in a bad way, just that they didn't realize that when you're hybrid, we have the option of recording video and audio. Oh. So they're all for the hybrid participation wise, but they were totally 150% against recording, posting links, uh, YouTube, live streaming, all that stuff. Hmm. So the, the, the end result of that is I talked to Justin about the need for all three boards that a paragraph to your rules of procedure on that topic. And it could be directed by you a little bit. In other words, you must have hybrid. You do not need to record, which is which does comply with state law, except for your board and the school boards have to have some recording piece, audio or video. We generally do both and live stream and it goes out and everybody knows it. And there has been no objection from select board members yet to that happening. Mm -hmm. So Justin's asking for direction. Now, what do I do? I said, well, for now, the DRB is no, we do not want it recorded or linked to, but hybrid's okay. I haven't had a chance to talk to the planning commission yet. So they've never been recorded in the past, the DRB? No, they've been they've been recorded and we have been doing it through COVID. Okay. So we, they, oh, so prior to that, they, we didn't. They finally realized that it was happening. Oh. <laughs> so they didn't, they didn't realize that this could be recorded. <clears throat> Gotcha. So the state law is that we have to have open meetings and we have and they haven't forced us to do hybrid. Right. The town has chosen to try to do hybrid as much as possible. Yeah. The DRB and Planning Commission have to have minutes, but they don't have to have recordings. Okay. So the select board could direct and have discussions with those two boards about how far you want them to go. If they're objecting, you know, if the DRB says no, we're just going to do minutes. If anybody wants to participate, they have to show up or call in. But that's the end of the viewing what happened piece. You can, if you missed it, you can read your minutes. Yeah, I'd like to be as transparent as possible. I, I so that's yeah. the discussion that we ended up with. Was like, okay, well, we're only staff here. Yeah, <laughs> there are three three boards have to chime in here. Yeah, so every March or April, you update your rules of procedure. Justin's going to work on what he can do with adding a paragraph. Okay. But somebody's got to make some decisions. So we put on hold DRB and planning commission for now, just until it gets sorted out. Select board will continue to be live streamed, YouTube, shared, posted, linked, whatever we need to do to make it as easy for people to get access to the, the transcript, which is really a video in this case. We don't, yeah. we don't go the extra length for minutes of the summary, but. So anyway, that's where I just want to make sure that you know there is something that's interesting, yeah. <laughs> but needs to be dealt with in mm -hmm. relatively okay. near future, next couple of months. Okay. We will get that draft and we'll work off of that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and nothing to add or change the agenda. Yeah. And we don't have any public comment. There's nobody else up there. Anybody got any public comment? Yeah, I think it's all members up there. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, Kim. Oh, and Kim. Well, she, I, consider, well, I consider her a member. Yeah. <laughs> I was just seeing both sides of that. Um, so the draft for FY 2024 <laughs> town budget review. We've got a copy here in front of us. <clears throat> I've got the it's 10 pages and first page is on screen. <clears throat> and this will go to you know two or three more revisions. Um, starting with the good that people want to know where we had it. So the 4.18 
percent tax rate increase is super early. I mean, if I had to give a range where it would end up, it's three to five. Once we get all the refinement done and new information from everybody and asking, dealing with the troll budget and dealing with insurances that are coming due and all that stuff. The other issue is the salaries and wages. That, that's a big issue. If you want to get 0% next July or 5% or 8%, 5% is in the numbers that you see here Okay. with 3% for the union highway people, which okay. is by their contract. So on this first page, which um, I'm just going to scroll through slowly, is has the bullet notes that summarize sort of where we're at. Um, and I don't need to slow the chart anymore, but I'll show the bullets. And in the past, we've run into expense budgets where we needed to reduce the tax rate. The select board has used some honest on fund, fund balance money to try to soften the blow, if you will. Those are short-term solutions because the expenses are going to be there. You might get a year off if you want to reduce your expenses by a little bit so you have to be reduced, but that is that you can't do that every year forever and ever. So there is a there is a argument to be said that you really want to control your expenses rather than throw one time money at it. The fifth full time person is in there with the full fifteen thousand um, auxiliary help. Okay. So that's in there plus all those expenses, and you'll see a large increase in the highway budget when we get there. Okay. I already mentioned the wages that are in there. Uh, the five percent is really a projection of what the CPI might be by next summer as it continues to slip slowly down. And we usually use the December CPI, which is January 10th or 13th, it will be published. So that'll be the last piece of national information that we can use. Okay. And then use your other factors, which are market factors, retention issues, all those kind of gets added on top of that. The regional assessor position is added at 24,000, which is 13,000 more than uh, we have in the current budget, but it's only 5,500 more over what we actually incurred with Nemrick. Oh. So I don't know how that's going to come out. The advertisement is out now through the end of December. No okay. interested parties yet. Are, who knows why? It could be the hourly rate. We were on Shelburne Road over the weekend looking at Burlington Bagel. First time, come on in the door. We'll put you to work at 25. Well, then. That I just guess. is ridiculous. I mean, not, not ridiculous in the sense that they need to do that. Right. Just that, that, and I'm looking at our wages and what we pay with people. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really flipping things upside down. Yeah. I don't even know where to either get off the train or what we're going to do. It did say up to 25. That's just starting 25. Yeah. <clears throat> I wanted. I just wanted if there even a tactic to putting something like that out there to draw a, yeah, a number of people there. then pick yeah. pick out of those. We met how they qualified with thirty five years of experience. I don't think that's true. I think if if you're walking and talking, you show up in time. Yeah, you know, and you want to learn bagel making or whatever they're doing. Of course, there's no benefits though. Right. Um, they, so there is a package deal that has to be considered. Yeah, right? for so sure. That food still. that fits in that hour wage too. Oh. That would be like an average thing. I'm not sure if that's what yeah. he did, but yeah. So okay. it's just a little, it's all a little weird. You know, some places are giving bonuses and some places are you know, finding nobody. Right. You know, just like we're doing now at $35 an hour right. for the assessor. Jesus. And that's higher than the state of Vermont's paying. Yeah. Right? So manage to test it to the it's really a it's really a crapshoot if you have to replace staff and just, yeah. just don't know what you're gonna get or what you're gonna have to do. What you're gonna have to pay. So the center road is the other item that's going into the third year of loan payments. We had a we had a dream or thought when we did that that the yep. um, uh, a quick repay on that. So we got Jennifer and I are trying to figure that out. That's why I even put the note in there. You know, if we can, how can we do it? Mm -hmm. And that will be a January discussion with you guys. Some of these items aren't necessarily deferred. It's just that we need to solve them. And if we can't solve them, we'll have to see the budget. If we can solve it and come up with another number, we can <coughs> in okay. January. Uh, kind of left capital reserve lines alone. Those are at the end of the budget. Um, a little bit more than 30,000 for highway reserve, which gets us back to FY22, which is 160. We cut it to 130 in FY current year 23. 
And this gets us back to where we were two years ago. Fire reserve is on a slow creep to try to get them up to what they need for sustaining. And both of those reserves are not sustaining. They're still behind. Okay. So when we do the five, 10 year projection of capital needs, those are still have loans identified. <laughs> and we don't really want to be there to avoid that. Sure. Okay. Uh, one of the wild cards, which sometimes if we have a board of listers, Julie was here, she'd be able to give me a pretty good number about now, about what that grandest increase might be mm -hmm. uh, in June, is six months ahead of time. Uh, I, I can't begin to guess it, but 1.5 might be light. That's my guess. And if there's a way to fine tune that and get confidence by January, mm -hmm. Maybe we could do a 2% in that final budget draft, but I didn't want to do it this first draft. So yeah. we don't have an assessor, we don't have listers. Exactly. We know we have a whole bunch of permits that we've issued for the last couple of years, right. which is higher than we had been doing. So you'll see in 2019, when we had seven house permits, the last three years we've had double digits, with this year being the most. So all that construction is going to be bunching up onto the grant list, probably now and into the next grant list. Of, depending on what people have left for financing for next year construction season. And some of those houses that, that are being built are on the high end side. So they're almost like two houses. Right. So, um, so that's the wild unknown number. And you, you can see the grand list. If we, if we end up changing it to 2.0 for estimated growth, then the tax rate increase will go down by half a percent to 3.6. So it does that little swap if you're if somebody wants to project 2.5, we'll be you know, down to 3% increase in tax rate, which is your goal, has been the goal for many years to have a tax rate increase of 3% or less. Yeah. The other thing that's out there, our FEMA uh, grant money, which we have, we have ARPA money left over. Uh, none of that is in here. We don't have, we have unassigned fund balance. That's not in here. So those three funding sources, which are being audited now, can have a higher confidence in January as well. Good. We hope. <laughs> so at some point you're going to make a decision. I think I'll once you have all your operating stuff ironed out a little bit better. Is how where's your goal? Do you want to do the three? Do you want to do a five percent overall? And then make your adjustments based on that. Um, one of the big things that's not in the expense budget, which Brian mentioned earlier, was the control budget because I didn't know where anybody was with that. We had asked, we had been asked for assistance under ARPA. Uh, the towns had been under a 3%. Roger's saying it's more like 7 or 8%. Johnson's objecting at 5%. I didn't hear, That's my understanding. I didn't hear what Wolcott's doing. So it's all over the place. I, mm -hmm. I didn't even have a way to guess what that exactly. was. Exactly. And Beth has reached out and tried to formulate some meetings several times, but they just haven't heard back from everybody. So it doesn't happen, type of thing, from my understanding. And so. Um, yeah, and it's times that are very difficult, and Beth is very uh, busy, and and uh, so it's been difficult to try to get back together again to uh, and discuss it more. Who's Beth? Um, the chair of Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, the chair of the Boy Johnson. Um, what's your last name? Boy. Boy, yeah, that's right. So I don't know how to resolve that at this point. Well, we kind of need to get that resolved, right? Yeah, we usually, it's been easy for three years. Roger and the towns agreed to three, and it was three, three, three. Now it's like, I can't do that anymore. I mean, yeah. Which I understand and, that. And like you said, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of funky with the ARPA money if we want to buy a, a, a cruiser or that type of thing. Um, so trying to figure that out, uh, how that'll work, you know, if it's going to be the same for for the if we bought the cruiser or something like that and then uh how much are they paying uh, the other two towns you know that type of thing mm -hmm. and so that's what we're working on trying to figure that out so that was page one now uh, we're going to reverse order that was the end <laughs> right yeah. so you're watching a movie uh in the beginning and this stuff is like i said before it's, it needs refinement and it needs more information it needs confirmation of things like 5%, you know, those kind of things, because anything that's highlighted yellow needs more work. And, you know, we, for example, just give you a quick example, like 
the FY22 expenses for driveway and highway access permits and the journal entry that is really $605 to $630. So we're trying to go through these numbers on the actuals, and then we'll also have some questions on the budget that you can be your decision making. Everything that's been presented so far, from fire to NEMS to GVH to not we you know the not in Hyde Park are all in here. Okay, great. Except for the police patrol question. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's two people at the end of the budget that are asking for uh, outside agency changes, which I need your, you turn to, I guess it's page five of the expense. Economic development. Well, there's two highlighted uh, yeah. costs for oh, here. Home health and health. Yeah, like what, how, how they send a letter asking for 9060 which is what kind of a formula based on three dollars per person we have new census numbers that came out so they just adjusted the not the, the policy we have says that if you're asking for an increase you have to go back to a special article and this is a two hundred dollars <laughs> so do you do you we probably should review the policy to see if there's a de minimis amount that's fine for the select board to decide or is it a dollar more goes to the voters as an article oh uh, yeah so I don't mind putting it to the voters because they're asking for an increase above what the voters had approved prior. That would go to zero, and then there would be another article for Lamoille Home Health at nine thousand six dollars, sixty dollars, which is exactly what happened to Lamoille Restorative Center. They submitted a petition asking for an increase to twenty five hundred. Put it on the line item. So we took it zero in the budget, and we added an article for twenty five hundred to see if the voters approve that. Gotcha. The risk is they lose the nine hundred. They would have had the nine hundred, but if the article is voted down, they'll lose the nine hundred, and they obviously won't get the twenty five hundred. Gotcha. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. I think I just want to stop there for now. The only other thing, the budget here, I would say um, the grand list, you'll see that number, FY22. And then the last page is a two page town warning. Yeah. Ron, if, yeah. If, if you put the sheriff, so the sheriff, the, the patrol budget's not in it right now, right? Right. Well, it is, it is, but a 0% increase. So um, what's it look like if we do, again, just so we know, like if we do 5%? Yes, it's about $20,000 increase, which is not going to okay. change your overall that much. Okay, yeah, okay. I think I think some of what we've done in the past is um, you know looking at the funds for and the expensive equipment purchases that are coming up is to use um, where we have some some one time money to help build up those reserves. You know because because that can also help if we can if we can use one time money in there and 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 be able to to uh, inch our way towards sustainability um, without having to do giant increases in what we put in from tax, from direct tax dollars every year, that might be helpful. Yeah, there's a balancing act for sure between uh, the money that the voters approve every year to go into the reserves and money the state sends for things like reappraisal. And then when those expenses are due, as well as being affected by inflation. So I expect that this month we'll get the letter for reappraisal. Yeah. Probably right around the 30th. Um, yeah. And I I can't believe they'll have a drop deadline, but they'll probably put us at least on notice that we're behind on reappraisal standards. We have about half of the money that we need to do in reappraisal because we had one done in 2018. So generally, you need about 10 years of contributions to get to the amount to pay for reappraisal. So 
So that kind of thing happens. And I believe the market's still fluctuating quite a bit. And Kristen said yesterday that she still sees you know our assessments being 30% light on what houses are selling for. At the current rate. Today. Yeah. 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 It used to be 50 and 100 percent. Right. At least it's gotten down to 30 percent, but it's still not, it's still enough disparity that it messes up with our CLA and COD. So. Right. so speaking of wage issues, what did we estimate that this guy is going to cost us? Did we, uh, we set a certain average in there? Do you know? Uh, just the base starting wage of 21, which is the low, low end of the current staff. Right. And I don't know if that's possible, but the benefit of the highway crew, if you want to look at it like this, is that they have a package through the union. True. So right. it's not just the hourly wage. They have benefits. They have different rates of pay. They have yeah. you know, not hugely different benefits overall, but they do have wage benefits that are guaranteed them. So even though they agreed to three percent, they still added on other benefits. Sure. Yeah. That get them more money over the course of the year. Yeah. So and it's not it, just the hourly wage for highway, but whether a union person coming in new sees that, I have no idea. Well, and do they? If a new person comes in, do they have to join the union? Um, if they want to. If they in their, in their contract, in their, yeah. It yeah. has to. Yeah, the new people. Some are some are some yeah. Some yeah. Some they have to be offered yeah. the membership. I don't know if they could be forced to pay the fees. There's a weird. Okay. Okay. There was something that just happened with the state. I know that uh, you don't have to join if you yeah. don't want to, and then you don't have to pay the fee. They used to make it so you still had to pay yeah. it, some sort of a fee. They changed the name of it, and that was uh, went to court. And yes, yeah, four years ago, plus or minus. Yeah. So anyway, this, you know, I don't know what the is. but I think the benefits still apply to them. So it's kind of a weird. It was a weird takeaway for the unions. I think that's why. I, IBW moved out to the Moyle County and started getting all the highway guys because they needed to get their numbers up. Yeah. I think that's my assumption. <laughs> probably. You're probably. <laughs> well, I mean, they mess with a three person crew or a two person exactly. crew. Exactly. Except to get their numbers up. Yeah. Anyway. For sure. Okay. Okay. Is that good? Anybody got any other questions on the budget? Okay. Number three uh, town employee bonuses. Um, I had. Uh, uh, Kim uh, reached out to me and uh, um, made me aware that uh, uh, Kim and Krishna and Jen did not get uh, a bonus like the rest of them did. And I don't know, that's why I reached out uh, to you to uh, try to find out uh, why that wasn't on the list and and uh, we kind of lost contact on that. So I figured we'd get it uh, figured out and resolved. And, uh, Move forward. There's two different things. Two different. Kim was never mentioned. I didn't think that that was in our. No, there's two. There's two different actions that the board took. Right. They're not. And they're unrelated. So, so I want to make sure we're talking about two different. Yeah. Different things. Yeah. The okay. action item that took place on December seventh. As far as I know, addressed everybody but omitted Kim's name from the list for the annual bonus of 250. And that's what I was trying to find out. Oh, because she had already year. gotten something. We had sent her. Kim did? That's what Jen told me. Jen oh. said she had been sent a $200 gift card or something. Am I, am I mistaken? Yeah, that? that's related, though. That was a medical event thing. Oh, uh, we're only talking about the annual holiday bonus, which you all doubled basically to 250 and 125 for a list of part time and full time employees. As far as I know, everybody that qualified as part time or full time got the 250 or 125, except for Kim, because she was admitted from that list. Yep, yeah, we didn't talk about her. So that's the one that we, Kim was saying, uh, did you mean to admit me? Because it was, it's an annual thing for all employees. And it has, and that, that I think what, um, Jen was possibly referring to was the medical get well kind of thing. Yep. And then we didn't, she told me everybody last year and she never mentioned Kim either. So I just assumed Kim wasn't involved. Yep. 
So, no, yeah, usually, she wasn't. Usually she is, and it's just a straight line, full time, part time. What Got do you it. guys want for numbers? Very, okay. very simple. Okay. They're Every not... December, you guys get your 750. Okay. The employees get the whatever number. Had been 140 and up. Okay. 40 for way long. And so, at least the new numbers seem to be moved up to the makes sense to do 250 and 125, right? But there was an omission. So, whatever that, whatever that is, it was a change from past practice. Got it. So okay. that's where Kim said, wait a minute. You know, it's a surprise here. Well, I guess she's not working either. So I guess I didn't yeah. think about it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So okay. Yeah, usually it only it, when we take a snapshot for making that initial list, it's who's employed in December, not somebody that left in February or somebody that right, but come. she's on leave, so she yeah, didn't be so she's technically still employed. She's still an employee, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're paying, we're paying her, and she's getting the uh, <coughs> uh, you know break the voted amount that she is owed, and she hasn't been um, what do you want to call it um, terminated or anything like that. Okay. And so benefits this, are running. This, this, you know, benefits are running are just normal. Yeah. You know, so. Just one clear. Uh, well, Kim's the only one who said that. That's it. That's the only person I heard from, and I, when I looked at the payroll warrants, it, it said why, and then I said, okay, well, it's a select board decision on seven, let's go with it, and there's no time during payroll to have a special select board meeting. Yeah. But when you contacted me, I said, it's all fixable, we're meeting on Tuesday. Yeah. Right, <laughs> exactly. So it wasn't that huge issue, it was just like, oh my God, yeah, we normal press practice yep. would just say anybody that's on the active employee list gets the two yeah. so that was miscommunication between jen and i <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's what i was trying to come to uh, yeah. a conclusion on is, yeah. is what, what was oh, i didn't know you were talking about kim <laughs> talking about the other thing you never mentioned kim in the phone call it would have oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, I would have told you that. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, I think I think there's another way to look at this, see? And that's the last time we left out Ron. So this time we left out Kim. There you go. Yeah. yeah. We'll have yeah. to pick somebody. We'll have to pick somebody. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, well, that's right. It's, it's select board policy to leave somebody it out. It seems to always be on me, too. <laughs> I screwed up with you and I screwed up with you. It's him. all right. It's all right. <laughs> I definitely don't do it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right? Employees are not on purpose. Right? So, 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 so we probably have to do a motion to put Kim in, right? Oh, no. yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah, yes. We should have a motion so that Kim can know that that's resolved one way or the other with a motion. Yeah. I will make a motion <laughs> <laughs> to um, give Kim the Christmas bonus that was given to the other full time employees. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Any anybody else? Okay. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Great. Yeah, you have it. Uh, just for roster purposes, I, what are you doing for votes? I didn't really. I think there's five zero. <laughs> So it's hard when when we got people remote. Oh. The training thing. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so when we have people remote and people here, you can hear to see these people shaking their head or saying yes. But I, I heard Matt, I think, I don't know if I heard Roland or saw his hand raise as approval. And I think Susan was okay, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you just be aware that sometimes there's a four to one. So we just you need as you just make sure that you got five zero. If you don't do what I did. Anytime you've done it before, you know, just put a stop at it and we'll stop yeah. and make sure you're talking right. Question. Yeah. 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 So okay, the town warrant. Um oh we have another you had another issue that you mentioned in your opening statement. You said uh Jennifer Christa. Yeah. Um they were uh, what was that? That was something that, that was something different. Okay. So earlier this you guys were talking about retainage issues. Yeah. And you said, and Highway was asking for some consideration. So you came around to an agreement with Highway to do something outside the contract. Then you added in uh, Mark and Ives for that, what, retainage? Retention, retention, retention bonus. Is that what we call it? Okay. When you were discussing that, and I think the reason why Jennifer and Krista were not involved, because we had just dealt with retention issues with them. 
through negotiation for new hire for Jen and, yeah. a, and a increase that was recommended by Kim for Krista. Correct. Yeah, so that's where it was and got pulled out. So that was, I'm just That was my recollection as oh, well, but I wasn't that. sure. If I, I don't think they were going to look at that. They considered they were Yes. And, and it was in the original discussion. Uh, right. Yes. Right. Negotiation. Right. Do you, does Matt and Rolly, do you guys remember that conversation? I want to make sure we're kind of all. Mm -hmm. And so Susan wasn't. I can't hear Ron all the time. I haven't turned that mic around or something. Yeah. All right. We'll do Ron. Thanks. You're, you're, you're asking about the conversation with Kim and Krista's raise. Krista and Jen. Re retention. The bonus. retention bonus. Remember when we discussed the retention bonuses for the highway department and Ron and Mark? Yep. And, right. we, you re, and we talked about Krista and Jen and the reason yep. is why. Do you, I thought they got I thought they were got the raises here and the other guys didn't. Okay. I want to make sure we were kind of all on the same page because I that I'm looking back at my minutes right now, but um they were they were supposed to get them, right? No, no, no. Because it because what Ron had just mentioned, it was already kind of negotiated in the in the initial um in, hiring in hire. in the initial hiring area. Okay, I really can hear. Did Not really in there. So it would have been Jennifer. No, we we had just Finished there had that. been two issues. No, I don't want to call it issues. Two suggestions that had come to us. One for Jen for an increase because her job she yes, was doing so Kim, much. Kim, so, Kim. And then Kim had suggested an increase for Krista for kind of the same reason that things were just changing <laughs> and becoming more. So I think that's why we had decided that we had already kind of dealt with their retention issues. Does everybody agree with me on that or no? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you're right. Okay. So I'd, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. this is Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, Kim. Hi. Um, I'd like to add that um, that was presented as bringing her up to a level of salary that was commiserate mm -hmm with what she was doing. It wasn't a bonus. It was, she was doing the work and she deserved the pay. So it wasn't a bonus. Right. That's how it was presented. And that's how I intended that to be. The fact that she could still today, God forbid, you know, leave the town employment and go elsewhere and still get anywhere from five to $8 an hour more, or even, or even more than that. Um, you know, she's happy doing the job, which I'm very thankful for. Um, but what was presented in July for the raise was to bring her up to a standard that other assistant clerks in the county and in the state were being paid for, for people doing the same work that Krista was doing. Yep. That's retention. That's how I feel too. That's really and the same along as retention. The same lines, she has been acting town clerk and treasurer from the time that I had surgery through when I come back in January, which has doubled her workload. She took complete charge of the general election and organized all that. You know, she ran the um, the taxes and all of everything that I normally do on a day-to-day -day basis, she's doing plus what she normally does. Um, Ron, before I left, had made comments to her about, well, you know, when Kim's out, um, you would get the you would get a higher salary. And I don't know how that would have worked. But, you know, she remembers that. And she has said something to Ron about it. And no, nothing was ever said back. So I feel like if you're not going to give her a retention bonus that the highway got, she needs a recognition bonus for her extremely hard work and dedication over my four month medical disability. So I will say, so you can, that we have, we have had conversations that when you came back, we were going to have a discussion and talk with Krista about her, about all the work she had done. So that, I know we have talked about that, that we were gonna, <clears throat> we were gonna make a decision when you came back on that. Okay. Why don't, why don't, why don't we just give her the, the bonus, engine bonus? And it'll be over with. Yeah. Plus, and, and she has done a lot, but Linda Martin has been there. Correct. Being a guide in yeah. hand. So it'll, Linda it'll, hasn't been there most of this month. She, Chris has been there alone. 
Um, and yes, Linda was there from the time I left, um, you know, part time and had, was a huge resource for her. But, you know, Hyde Park does do a little things a little bit differently. So, you know, Krista had a learning curve on that. And Kim, you mentioned something about a um, uh, savings in your pay. So I'm getting $500 a week, which equates to $1,000 um, a payday every two weeks um, through disability. That's not being charged to the, the line items for my salary in the budget. That's coming from the disability company. Um, whatever is given to Krista is offset by the fact that the town is already saving money for me and you're know, getting the disability. So she, if she, if we would give her the tension bonus, Kim, you think she'd be happy then? Or it would um, help? It's, it's different. I don't want to confuse what we did. Yeah. The retention was specific to retention issues. And what Kim is advocating for is recognition for extra work uh, or demands that Krista's doing while Kim is on medical leave, which is a third different category that we're Correct. talking about. So, so I don't know, I don't I don't know, know exactly dollar, how many days dollar dollar I didn't sit down here to, you know, I haven't, you know, calculated that, but, you know, twice a month I'm paid basically um, some months it's three times. But, you know, that's $2,000 in a month. And I'm not saying give Krista all of that savings, but she is very worthy of getting, you know, a decent recognition bonus for a four-month period. I would say I would recommend a $3,000 recognition bonus for what she's done. You know, she, she did all of the delinquent tax collection leading up to a cancellation of the tax sale, which was huge. She's been dealing with all of the VHFA um, applications and payments for people who applied through the to that program um, for tax payment, you know, delinquent tax payment assistance. That's something I normally do. And the tax sale is something I normally do. Um, you know, all of the things that I normally do, she's done. And over four months, if you're saving, you know, $2,000 a month in my salary, that's $8,000 of a savings to the board. And if you give three of that to Krista as a recognition bonus for what she's done, you're still saving $5,000 from the salary that, you know, I'm not taking through the budget, but getting through disability. Right. But then well, is she going to expect to get that much more money when you come back? No, it would be all encompassing and it would be made to, for her to understand that this bonus is for the four months or however long I've been out. We've driven out, right. Right. And may I ask when you're coming back? Or if you're I am scheduled to come back on um, January 30th. I have an appointment on the 27th of this month. And when I schedule that for the next appointment for January, I'm hoping they can get me in like the Thursday or Friday before I'm scheduled to come back so that in case there's any changes, they can be dealt with. Um, not to get too technical as to what happened and why I'm out longer. I had a quirky antibody problem. It's, it's, very, it's very deep and medical, but they ended up giving me an oncology IV. It's not, it's, for me, it's not cancer related, but that oncology medication completely killed my immunity. And okay. as my immunity dropped to nothing, I had side effects you know, fatigue is one of them, even though I'm sleeping fine. And they just didn't want me, you know, back to work because of all of these other side effects and the huge risk of being around people with absolutely no immunity. Um, they're saying that this month is supposed to be the worst month of no immunity. And from the, you know, December going forward, it's supposed to increase. I don't know how fast it increases, but because of that, that's one of the reasons why they told me I can't do or manage town meeting and why, you know, Krista was approved to do general election and town meeting. Um, so I'm hoping that my immunity is back enough that I can come to work, but the, at, you know, on just January uh, 30th, but they did say, because my immunity will still be low, 
when they do the return to work, it, they're going to clarify that if anybody is, you know, comes to work and has any kind of sniffle, cough, cold, had a fever over the weekend, I am, I am being told to go home. That's what they have told me they're going to do. Because if I get anything, it's basically an immediate admittance to the hospital for monitoring because it's so bad. Is that, did you just say when you come back, you have to be careful about that issue? Yes. If, even the pub, public coming in? As if the public comes in and you know I can't control what they've done or where they've been or if they've been sick, I've been told if they're only going to be there for a few minutes, shut the door. And, you know, when they leave, if I need to clean whatever they've touched so that I don't get sick, um, if it's, you know, somebody coming in to pay a bill at Krista's counter or something, that's totally different. But <clears throat> if the employees who are in the building all day, every day, if anybody has been sick or whatever, I need to know so I can work from home. I need to go home. I can't be around people who had a fever over the weekend and are, you know, maybe still contagious of something. Um, and that will change as my immunity comes back. When it comes back to its new full immunity, it won't be a hundred percent. I'll always be between 70 and 80%, you know, with my immunity because of the medication I'm on to prevent the kidney from rejecting. Sounds like a very difficult situation for staff. To me. Well, no, it's a matter of the staff recognizing that, you know, if they're coming to work and they're fine, but they had a fever over the weekend, they need to tell me so I can work from home. That's an easy thing to do. Kim, you're practically speaking, everybody in the office is sick right now. Oh, well, then I would just work from home. That's, that's easy. And like I said, once I get up to the 70 to 80%, things will be different. I don't know when that will happen, but when I have this extremely low immunity while I'm recovering, once I come back to work, you know, when I come back, I may only have 40%. I may only have 50, but they're telling me until I get to the new level, the new high level for myself, the 70 to 80, I need to be extremely careful. And that 70 to 80 may be in April. They're yeah, saying, right. you know, out six months. So, you know, March, April. But they, even at even at 70 to 80, that's still compromised. No, because I'm wearing a mask and I'm doing everything that I, I need to do to protect okay. myself. No, I was just wondering, wondering when staff can say they don't need to be notifying you anymore that they might have had a kid sick over the weekend. That kind of, that kind of thing, you know, practical. When my immunity is like the 70 to 80% that they're saying it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. So February and March will be tricky for me unless, you know, I work from home for those two months or unless I work from home until I know I'm at the 70 or 80. Yeah. No, I was just trying to run that up just to, just to get it clear in my head. So you won't be able to do elections in March or town meeting in March. No. And no. I knew that before even going in and that's oh, why okay. we went to the BCA and got approval for uh, Krista to be the presiding officer for town meeting as well. Oh, that's right. We did talk about that. Yeah. yeah. And then if I understand correctly that you're getting 500 a week in disability and that's getting taken up off of your paycheck here. Yeah, I, I'm that. sorry. I couldn't hear Justin. What was that question again? I couldn't hear him. So you're getting $500 a week in disability and that amount is getting taken off of your paycheck from the town of Hyde Park, so correct. Not, okay, I get a separate disability check from the disability insurance company, and that that's worked out well for you. I was just curious if that was okay. That process, yeah. Um, sometimes the check arrives a little early. Sometimes it arrives on the on 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 payday. Sometimes it arrives on Saturday or Monday after payday. You know, that's a little yeah. No, that's good. I was just curious. Thanks. Yeah. Is there, uh, I just, I, I've got to ask this because it's raised a, a question in my head. Um, people divulging uh, sick kids or any sort of uh, problem um, medical, is there a HIPAA 
thing you know, and I'm sure everybody wants to uh, uh, support you and I think they've shown that thus far. I'm just wondering if there's any sort of a HIPAA uh, problem and maybe there's a waiver or something. I don't know. I don't know what. No, I think I, I think HIPAA is just dealing with your medical people dealing with other people. Not I think parent, you want parent, to, employee right. to employee, right. I think if you want to release that information as a, I think people could refuse to release that information to Kim, but I don't think anybody would. That's right. Like personally, do you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to tell people your medical stuff, but as an individual, but I don't, I would hope people wouldn't. I wouldn't expect anybody to tell me <laughs> what was happening under their roof. If they just came to work and said, just want to let you know my kid was sick all weekend. <laughs> exactly. you know that. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, yeah, it would be different. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's really it's as simple as somebody has a cold or a flu or, you know, something. Right. right. Yes. So what do we want to do for uh, Krista? Kim, is the last question on Krista, is there any reason to, not to wait until you're back? Or do you want to do a midterm one and then have a second one? Or what do you, so much a month while you're away? Um, we can certainly wait until I'm, I'm back. I've, um, that's not a problem at all. Um, just as long as I know that it's not going to be like, you know, thrown under the rug and forgotten. You know, she needs to, she needs to know that she's totally appreciated for all the hard work she's done, you know, not only by me, but by the town, by the board <clears throat> while I've been out. I just want to speak over that, Kim. I mean, that, that goes for all of our employees. I mean, anybody who works, I mean, for us to turn around, if one of, if one of our town guys do a little extra, I mean, we don't go throw them a big bonus, but I'm 100% on board with giving her something or working with her. But I just, I, I mean, every time if we turn around and uh, I mean, it, she's appreciated 100% and I, I recognize that, but I just, my feeling is turn around, a bonus, a bonus, and a bonus, and a bonus, and extra money, extra money. Eventually the bank account runs out. So just my thoughts. I appreciate hearing that, but this is a totally different situation. This is a medical situation. I didn't ask for, you know, extra stuff you know, all the time. It's, it's just, this is a, a totally extreme situation. And, and, and if I remember right, we did something for one of the town employees when they didn't have no more time, you know, I mean. Yeah, I think Matt was specifically referring to the select board figuring out the dollar amount. That's all. So we can, we'll have to take that up at some point. I don't, if Kim's willing to wait and it's not like uh, emergency or promised or whatever, the board can think about it and get, get back to it. Well, we had but not forget about it. about it, right, Kim? We had talked about it at the fire department. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. It's been discussed. So, so it will be discussed um, in January or February, probably, because Kim will be back at that time, we're hoping. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I just want to put something down there so it is a follow-up. I say in January, we talked about it. Yeah, that's fine. I just threw out a date, I mean, trying to figure it out. And Kim will find out more if she's going to be out any longer or anything right. like that, too, on the 27th. Right, so, true. You want to do it at the first meeting or the second meeting? First meeting. Yeah, what Which, she said. Yeah. <laughs> what is his last name? Uh, Joan? Joan. Joan. Yeah. So just so if anybody didn't hear, we're going to revisit that on the, the uh, first meeting in January. Okay. Any other? So be thinking about what you want to do, guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kim, just a quick question. Um, so how many how many months will you be out total? Uh, a total Five. of four. Oh. Four. Okay. And a, doing doing the simple math of two paydays a month, that's a savings to the town of two thousand dollars a month, eight thousand dollars overall. Yeah. And my recommendation is a three thousand dollar bonus to Krista for a total savings to the town of five, instead of eight. <laughs> but what did Linda cost? 
figure out what Linda comes from. You know what, uh, um, what Linda, what it costs us to yeah, have Linda do report on that. You do okay. Yeah, we don't have that. Okay. Okay. So the minutes review. Do we have a copy of the minutes and then what was mailed out? The warrants, uh, she's got those, but they won't be able to be approved because they haven't been. No, you can have a vote and then they can come and sign. Okay. Yeah. That's, we don't need these. All we need is three signatures on it. We're going to need just a minute to. Yeah. Ooh, look, they're on here. Mm -hmm. Did you guys look at them online by chance? I've... I did not. I'm negligent. Well, there's not much in here, so it's pretty easy. Payroll. Investment. Ron, did you submit the minutes to be um, that thing that I, I I brought to your attention? The correction. Yes. Okay. And I changed that online. Thank you. Yeah, that was a, not a small uh, discrepancy there in terminology. <laughs> it makes a difference. Yeah, for sure. I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. Does anyone want a second? I'll I'll second it. I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> There's really no. This is a low. This is a low amount. Yeah, the payroll and the library. It's payroll and our payments. That regular, yeah. Yeah, yeah our money. Woo! Money. Woo! Okay. Woo -woo! <laughs> the payroll doesn't look. I like to yeah. yeah, it's on the inside oh, right. of that one there. It threw a curve. Yeah. Okay. So, so all in second. favor of accepting the uh, warrant, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Ayes have it. Now, do we want to discuss the. Matt, uh, did you vote? Yep. Aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Right. He's on top of it. That's what I like about him. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. And um, you know, with the monthly finance memo, I read that and about the uh, trying to work on the um, investing. Yeah, I think last meeting, Jennifer sent a, like a one page memo. Yeah. She's good at doing summarizing her thoughts, basically. And I, I read it and I didn't see a question, maybe. Unless you guys saw, yeah, that. no, I didn't either. And, and it was she was adamant about uh, trying to find investments, uh, and what didn't there was something that didn't work, and then they're going to try, yeah, so she, try something she else. She was restructuring the investment options to the Community National Bank. Yes, yeah, which, Community which National. were higher than uh, Union Bank. So, yeah, I think if you give her direction to bring back a proposal with dollars and percentages and terms and all that stuff that you could consider that for action item on January 10th, which is your next meeting. Which I think we did that, didn't we? Didn't, or did we just talk research? She was researching. Right? Yeah. She was giving you an update on her research. Okay. The switch to the financial institution and kind of what the rates were a little bit higher than Union Bank, but I didn't see dollar. I think there was a, it looked like there was supposed to be a dollar amount in one sentence. Yeah. So we need a, like a schedule, you know, with the, yes. with the um, details, with the terms yeah. and all that business. So I'll tell her that, okay. say, you know, plan on January 10th so you can take an action or, or maybe it changes again, it's just an update. But yep. if she okay. has an action item, she'll have to phrase that for you. So you see it okay. with the numbers. Kim, have you been following that discussion with investments and trying to get some free cash into uh, CDs? I I have not. No, this I've only watched a couple of the um, meetings. I, yeah, I just want to get, give you a quick update. So, um, part of what we're doing with ARPA and FEMA reimbursements and unassigned fund balance and all the reserves is starting to look at free cash, which is basically short term periods of time, four, six, 12 months, where the cash is not needed for any particular purpose or planned expense so that um, investment vehicles like a CD or, or whatever 
can be explored to get two, three, four percent instead of you know one or less. And, and then those, those would those would turn over or ladder they call them sometimes, but uh, something that we're just trying to explore a way of regularly in regularly investing in those types of things. Uh, something that the finance committee, which hasn't been started, but that's something that uh, Jennifer and I've talked about would would be on their agenda item, but we're not there yet. So this is just an interim measure to get some of the money working for the taxpayers while we're figuring out a longer term investment. I think it's a good idea. So, <clears throat> Anyway, we'll we'll have our draft something for the tenth. Okay. <clears throat> and the minute review for the third from the thirteenth. It looked fine to me. Yeah, me too. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from January. Uh, excuse me, December thirteenth meeting. Need a second. I'll second them. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Got them all. Yep. So that Mark French just joined. I don't know if he has a question or. Hey, Mark. He's muted. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk to us. I'm sure he'd say something, but he just. I don't know if you're trying to find a mute button. Or... Brian. Hoy. Brian. Hoy. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little late, but I did catch a lot of it, but I didn't catch anything for highway. Well, yeah. we didn't talk about you. Okay, that's good then. That's what I like. <laughs> don't talk well, about me. Hope it didn't bust your bubble or something. <laughs> so can we go back to bed? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, you can. You're gonna have to get up in a couple hours. Mark, we left it with a quick overview of highway that sees a large increase. That increase includes the fifth person and maintaining $15,000 of auxiliary on call, summer help or winter help, whatever you need for that purpose. Right. And, okay. but, I, but I kind of want to explain, which I kind of explained to you, Ron, the other day was a lot of that probably be handed back because it's just the, the formidable of a project. I would like to be able to call Blaine or whatever in to help out so we're not, excavators not sitting, everybody's not sitting if I got a guy on vacation. So I don't think that's a definite, I think that was a more of a, a cushion. You know, we have our mower because I don't have nothing. Of, if we take the fifth guy and put him on a mower, I lose. And I kind of kept the cushion there being if Ryan took vacation or Mike or whoever for a middle of a project, I don't want the excavator sitting, truck sitting in the shop, not enough guys to do the project. That was kind of a just a cushion yeah. for us in some ways. Yeah. The other the other way to look at it is the fifteen thousand gets you uh, basically a, a week, you know, for every thousand dollars, a week worth of that auxiliary. Right. And it's another thing to bring up to the board is I just learned, and I've got to relook at because I didn't have the numbers original. I think we're going to be about five to six thousand dollars over that original truck purchase on Mike's truck that is getting built as we speak at Viking. But we should, I think we're going to come in about five thousand dollars over with some surcharges and stuff. I think so. That price wasn't locked, Mark. Uh, no, because uh, it's really strange because we had to do that two years prior. Yeah. And we haven't even got the trade in on Mike's truck yet. And he's supposed to be coming to give us a trade in value. It's a really strange world right now that we're in. Everything is so much different than it used to be for our specking a truck. Uh, I got a call today from Andy from Viking. He, we talked for an hour trying to figure out he can't get a valve system to run all the hydraulic implements. And we switched some stuff around today, which might be some of the cost difference but it's not a huge difference you know on a two hundred thousand dollar truck or two hundred twenty thousand of five thousand but i kind of expected it not knowing you know the world we're in today things are changing and you know i have no say you have no say none of us have any say it's just the way it is 
But I'm expecting about a $5,000 increase. I don't know what Mike's truck's going to come in at. I assume it'll be pretty good because the values are up so much right now. Uh, I know Danny's supposed to come look at it within a week or two because this thing should be done within a month to a month and a half. I would assume we would have it in service. Okay. And Mark, what did you say about the $15,000 and a cushion and the fifth person? Well, the, the, so I, I need money for the mower because if we don't have that, but I'm, I'm looking at if we're on a project and I need a hand, I don't want to be strapped. So I don't know if we'll use, I don't, I think that 15,000 is just a cushion. So we have the, in my head, if we need to, I can have a guy come in to run a truck for a day. Not, it's not going to be all week, but a day or two a week, maybe. Right. I think it was more of that was. So I would assume some of that probably would be handed back in at the end of the year. I would think it's just that safety cushion for us to, we can keep a project going and not sitting around twiddling thumbs. You can have another driver come in. If somebody was going to go on vacation. Okay. Or somebody's out sick or whatever in today's world. Yep. <clears throat> Sounds like good business. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Anything else, Mark, that you'd like to add or anything? Um, just curious on the thoughts of that fifth guy from the board. I don't know. I really don't know where they're at. I don't know if you guys know where you're at yet. Or we're not far yet. Um, I can tell you um, where I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rowley's been opposed to it right along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he thinks it's a bad idea, but we're trying to drag him into the boat to go along with him. <laughs> Susan, I did break that. I don't know. Did Susan, did you see the last meeting or did you? Yeah. Yeah. Any of that? Yeah. To break that down some just to make it sound a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. No, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'd say nobody else on the board is saying anything, but I mean, I think we've got it in the budget and I don't. Um, and, and while it's just budget is still sort of gulp, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be fine with being able to pay for that and not skin everybody else alive. I think we're going to be fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, well, yeah, thank you, Mark. And all go your bed. guys. Yeah, go to bed. <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> Get ready for Thursday and Friday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think we're going to go and stand heavy in the morning to get ready for it. Try to, the sun's supposed to come out tomorrow, so we're going to try to heat the roads up a little bit. Yeah, good idea. Okay. All right. You guys good with me? Yep. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Other business? Manosh Parshall, uh, Garfield, and McFarland, and Susan, when's going to be a good time to go meet with uh, with Howard? Um, let's you and I just text back and forth and do it because I'm mostly around now. Okay. Okay. I was meaning to reach out to you, but I've been so blastly busy the uh, past couple of weeks. But uh, well, I know uh, everybody is. You kind of just need to get through the holidays, and then yeah. you know. Yeah, I'd like, like to reach out to him and, and and schedule it somehow, like first or second week of January, if we can, to get yeah keep things yeah. rolling. Yep. So uh, I'll try Why to communicate. We... Yeah, if you want to go ahead and reach out and schedule with them, or because or, yours again will be the more complicated schedule, and you yeah. get the date, and I'll I'll be there. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, I'll get back to you. Sure. Thank you. Anything else on the parcel? No. Nothing new. Okay. So, yeah, motion to adjourn. Goodness. Second thought. Motion to adjourn. Do we have any other business? <laughs> I have a question. Oh, okay. 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 Do you guys want to go home? <laughs> is the zoning position at all considered in this area or is it not being disputed? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good good point. The 
discussion that we left off on dealt with breaking up the town administrator budget and trying to figure out board clerk planning and zoning 24 hours and then the combination of uh i would say a budget funded and grant funded position that would kind of move the bigger projects forward mm -hmm. yep and yeah. with, with all the committee support and all you know groups so i'm i think all that mixes up to within the budget i guess is where i'm headed so from a budget perspective we have to get all the details it's all right out. the money's there the so money's how to separate it right so that's why it's not a special line item but we're not done with that discussion anyway right. yeah so yeah good good point i just know yeah. we need to finish that we're about halfway through the breaking it up yeah yeah good. anything else <clears throat> motion to adjourn motion to adjourn second we'll give a thumbs up to it yeah. yeah. okay we're seeing if i was saying aye aye, aye. 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 And ha have a great evening and a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday and all that. Right, boy. It sounds like everybody be careful on the roads coming up pretty soon here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all the rest of you get better soon. Yeah, right. <laughs>